Mrs. P rushes into the hollow. Soren, it's Eagle Jean. Come quick. Soren follows Mrs. P into the medical area, where they see Ginger passed out with a large scratch on her wing that doesn't appear to be bleeding. Otilus and Digger are attending to her, though they appear to be more curious than anything. Next to them is Eagleteen. She's covered from head to toe in blood and is chanting. No, no, not again. What's wrong with her? Where's Prim? We're not sure, Gilfie replies. A few minutes ago, Ginger came flying in with Eagleteen that passed out. Eagleteen's covered in blood, but, but it's not her blood. Ginger wakes up. You're awake. Ginger, can you tell us what happened? Primrose and Eagleteen and I, we, we were going to fly to the spirit woods and back. We, we landed at the lake in the center for a quick snack when Primrose suddenly got really dizzy. Then suddenly the pure ones attacked us. I, I, I can't. I, I tried to reason with them like Eagle Teen reasoned with me, but they said they didn't care. What happened to Eagle Teen? T to Prim? I don't remember. Why can't I remember? You're probably in shock. You only received a flesh wound, but it could have been enough to send you into shock. I think the Prim has been captured by the Pia ones, but... Right. Ginger, you rest. I'll go report to the King and Queen. Digger, Otilisa, take Ruby and Twilight to investigate the lake in the spirit woods. It's okay, Sorn. We'll figure this out. I'm sorry. It's okay. Get some sleep. Ginger nods and closes her eyes while Eagleteen continues to chant, and everyone except Soren leaves. Cut the later. Eagleteen is all cleaned up and talking to Soren in the infirmary. And that's what happened. Eagleteen, can you remember anything? No. All I remember is that we were flying to the spirit woods. The three of us landed, then I woke up here. I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you more. It's okay. Egg. Are you okay? You, you don't sound like yourself. I am fine. I just want to go back to sleep. He just woke up though. I am just very tired. Maybe you should consider going to the Gloxian sisters. You don't look well and the pure ones were able to make you go back to that weird chanting state. No, Soren. I am fine. I just need to find Ma and Da. Then everything will be okay. Not like this. You clearly aren't well. Trust me, it's better for you to not be here if they attack again. As Lord comes in. Soren, the King and Queen and I want to speak to you. Okay. Egg, I'll be back. You should try to relax. Fine. As Lorib and Soren leave, once they do, we enter Eagleteen's dream where we see Marilla. Ma, I am ready to find you. Good. I have a little surprise waiting for you. Look over there. Eagleteen turns around and sees an egg in a nest. This is your new baby brother or sister. This egg is extra special. How so? This egg will hatch during the upcoming lunar eclipse. 
owls born during the lunar eclipse are said to have the potential for great good or great evil. Wow, that's great. You and Doc can raise the egg of the kohol tree. We can keep them safe from the pure ones. That sounds lovely, darling. I can't wait to see you again. I'm sure Soren will be happy seeing you again, too. Yes, I look forward to seeing your brother again. But for now, I only want to see you, my darling. Quickly, come home to me. I will. Eglatine wakes up to see Ginger looking outside. Eglatine attempts to walk get towards the exit, which Ginger notices. Where are you going? Ma, she needs help. The egg will hatch on the lunar eclipse. The pure ones will be after her. I need to tell Soren. Has Soren believed you at all this entire time? He's done nothing but treat you like a fragile little hatchling with an overactive imagination. He's just going to tell you to go back to sleep. We should go and save your ma ourselves. Okay. Eglatine and Ginger fly out of the medical area. Cut to dig around the others. Twilight and Ruby are flying around the lake while Otelissa and Digger investigate the area. So, um, what are we looking for again? Evidence. Evidence of what? We don't think Ginger's being truthful, but we don't have evidence of this. Ginger had a scratch on her wing, but it wasn't bleeding. The pure ones were trained to violently kill anyone who stands in their way. Why wouldn't they do the same to someone they view as a traitor? Hmm. Guys, look at this. The others fly to where Otelissa is, and they see several small animals that have been torn apart. No blood. All signs that they have, have even been nibbled on. What animal would tear their prey apart and not eat just a bit? None that I know of. Guys, there's something else. Ruby points at a slug that has little pieces torn off of it. Primrose is allergic to slugs. It's a common allergy amongst owls, hence why they're not eaten at the tree. Ginger said that they stopped at to eat, and that was a primrose step to get dizzy. And Eglatine was acting strange before and after leaving the tree. There could be several reasons for it. Digger, everyone, we need to go to Eglatine's hollow. There's something I want to see. The others nod and fly away. Cut to Soren, who is talking to Ezra, Boron, and Baron. Boron speaks first. Soren, I'm pleased to hear that Eglatine is well. I wish to speak to you about your earlier request regarding her, Ruby, Primrose, and Mrs. P being sent to the Gloxian sisters. Soren, we understand that you wish to protect them. Really, we do. But we fear that you are growing overly protective. I know, it's just Eglatine and Mrs. P are the only ones I have left of before I got shoved out of the nest. During the journey to the tree, I kept hoping that I'd see Eglatine, Ma, and Da again. I was afraid I'd never see them again, that they got killed. When I found out that Ma and Da were killed, the quad did it. I felt really empty. As Lord nods, thus making you cling onto your friends to make yourself feel whole again. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's a testament to your great heart that you can find and hope to find the good in others. Your greatest strength is your ability to let others in. But the 
heart's greatest weakness is that it is vulnerable to being hurt by those they let in, as you have learned with your brother. It is also love. It is also the heart that makes us blind to those that we love and what's really happening to them. I was blind to what my brothers were becoming. If I had stepped in back then, I could have seen their corruption and maybe stopped them. Because of this, my mate was murdered, and we now have to contend with the pure ones and Sadagis. It is the same with us and Dulap. If we didn't want to tell her what her future likely entailed, we wanted to shield her and lead her away from it without her ever having to worry. But instead, we drove her into Naira's talents. This led to Dulap's breakdown and struck Sturma's death. All of this is to say, while you should worry about others, you also need to step back and see if you're really helping or hurting the situation. Otalissa, Digger, Ruby, and Twilight fly to the entrance. May we come in? Of course, with Rock. The other owls fly in. Digger is holding an amber rod covered in flux. Those are flax. Where? Eagleteen's nest. It was covered by down. When one sleeps on flax, it causes something called shattering, which is similar to stone stunning or moon blinking. I remembered reading a chapter in the book on flax on the effects they have on the owls in Ambala. They cause some owls to gain special abilities and mutations, but others. Hortense mentioned that her grandmother went insane because of them. Digger nods. Yes, it looks as though shattering is confused with madness. Where's Eagleteen? She and Ginger were in the infirmary. One of the snakes mentioned seeing them fly towards the beaks. Also, we think Ginger set the whole thing up. We saw a slug that had bits torn off and animals that were drained of blood but not eaten. What? Otalissa, assemble the troops. Twilight, Digger, Soren, stay here. Ruby, go get Gillithy, then join the others. We have a plan. Right. Otalissa and Ruby fly away. Cut to Eagleteen and Ginger as they fly to some fog. Eagleteen begins to sing. I'm coming home to my tall tree In a forest deep and green Let my owl check sweet for me Tucked away in my small tree I bring you gold under the moon, the blood's not cold, I'll be there soon, and from my breast, I'll pluck some down, so you can rest, till the moon grows round, sleep on babies, grow strong, meet your feathers flesh, your wings grow long. And then at day's edge, when dark brings light, we'll rise together in chicks first flight. I'm coming home to my tall tree.